There's, of course, there's a lot of science. There's actual what always impressed me with Doctor Who is also the scientific aspects because there's a lot, there is some science and there's to kind of explain logically or false science to explain logically what is going on. Because uh, at times I, there's a couple things I'm like that sounds very scientific, but at the same time I'm like, is it real science? <laughs> like they exp uh, they talk about an on explosion. I'm like, is that even a real terminology for why you know a nuclear power plant didn't go meltdown? I mean there was an ex it was something that seemed like an explosion, but it, it, it they explained it like uh, there was an explosion. The energy drew inward towards the hand rather than outward. So that was an interesting explanation, which seems very scientifically true. But I couldn't find anything to really when I looked it up to really say whether or not it was actual fact. Like something like that can is actually possible or can happen. Uh, but it was very cool. I liked that. Um, the uh, uh, the form of the Castroni and the female form. Um, Eldred, the character's name is Eldred, the very female form that I showed you the picture of, uh, you know, her, Eldred right here, the female form of Eldred, Eldred, is very beautiful, very exotic, I mean, they're silicon-based life forms, the Castronians, and the, the kind of sand and diamond look, I mean, the cone head, it just looked very beautiful and exotic, and it was just like, wow, it's like, she stood tall, you know, she was kind of, you know, strong, she, she kind of, you know, seemed threatening at the same time, it's like, wow, it's, really good design and the way she performed it everything that you just look and the way she performed it just says volumes about her, about that character um, the uh, uh, and the uh, the uh, the planet went the last episode uh, was when we come to Castronia the end of episode three but we get the rest of episode four is taking place on the, on Eldred's home planet and there is an interesting storyline there because we uh, at first we think oh Eldred's a menace, but then it's like oh no, Eldred's not a menace because Eldred was exiled and relatively killed, betrayed by by Eldred's own people because Eldred had built these barriers to stop these great winds that was on the planets to you know that was kind of devastating the planets, which built the barriers, um, and there was an alien invasion that came and destroyed the barriers and everything. But he blamed Eldred, so they exiled Eldred. And it was kind of an interesting story. It made it sympathetic towards them. But then later, um, when they get get to the planet, spoiler alert, um, we find out that's not true. That Eldred actually wanted to conquer the galaxy, and everybody everybody on the planet didn't want that. They didn't like that, and Eldred was exiled for it. So therefore, Eldred destroyed the barriers and left the planet devastated. <laughs> because once they get to the planet, it's like barren. It's destroyed. Uh, at one point, Eldred actually wanted to come to Castronia before. Uh, before, well, at the time when he left, but the doctor said, "No, there's a first. The first r law of time is you can't do that. I can't take you back to when you left because that's, you know, altering history. You know, you're confusing history. You know, it's something you can't do." So this the doctor takes Eldred to the time at that time, at that present, and Castronia is just a barren snow planet. I mean, there's nothing but rock and sand. And there's underground, you know, underground society underneath, but the thing is, though, there's no living thing down there. It's just rock and sand because uh, all the people had actually died. Uh, sorry, spoiler alert there, but all the people had died, so they're just basically rock and sand. And every step they took, they were pretty much walking on dead bodies. Because they're silicon based, they just became sand. Um, and Eldred, you know, wanted to get his revenge, which he, he, she didn't. Although by the time um, they got the Castronia, uh, Eldred actually changes form into a male form, his true form. Uh, the reason why the Eldred became a female was because Sarah Jane was the first one in contact with the hand, and so Eldred based her the form on a female, which was based on Sarah Jane. And then when they got to Castronia, they the Eldred regenerated again and became a, the true form, which is the male form. And we find out there that you know he's actually a villain. And that was kind of interesting, and the male form was very well portrayed as well, very masculine, very, you know, deep, and very demanding. And then we, f and we find out that the whole society, knowing, uh, figuring that Eldred would come back eventually, decided to, because they knew that he wanted to come create an army and conquer the galaxy, they decided oblivion. They let themselves die. They left no trace for anything to be recreated, and no, uh, you know, no, no living thing to be recreated to create an army. Nothing. They just decided oblivion and death. And I was just like, that is deep. That is deep. To really 
not just not just one person to try and convince the entire society to do mass genocide, but the fact that the whole civilization wanted mass genocide of their own kind. That was deep. I couldn't really comprehend it. I, I was amazed. And, um, and uh, af after, after Eldred found this out, Eldred decided, well, I'll just go back to her and conquer. And, of course, the Doctor and Sarah Jane, you know, dispose of him uh, in a kind of silly way. <laughs> it was kind of... That was the one, dis not really disappointing thing, it was just kind of like, well, that was simple. Um, was the way they disposed of Eldred was there's a, a pit that was kind of like an abyss, and they used the doctor's scarf to set a trap to where Eldred tripped and fell into the abyss. And it was a quick way to do it, but however, it was, it was needed because of the ending. The ending is why this this story is very popular is because at the end of the story Sarah Jane leaves and I think they needed enough time to just kind of tell that and that final scene it, it is really sad because uh, Sarah Jane is one of the most popular characters in Doctor Who particularly Companion you know a very strong female character and and was great for that time because of the not only women's lib but also gave you know it was very kind of an inspiration for you know, young girls or teens and older adults, but also set the groundwork for future women in Doctor Who. Um, and, and she wasn't just like a character that just went, ah, scream, oh no, help me. It just, she was really, you know, there. I was like, I can defend myself at the same time. I know when I'm cashiered. I know when, you know, when, when you know, I went on my out of loss. But at the same time, even though when she was captured, she showed strength. She said, I can get, she seemed like she can get out of here. Although, even when she felt like she couldn't, she, there was just a little tiny hope that she could get out. You know, she didn't really show much weakness, and that was pretty cool. And so when she decided to leave, that was sad. It was just her just saying, I'm fed up, you know, I'm tired of this, I can't do this anymore. And so she was just like, you know what, the doctor's not listening to me anymore, and it's just, I need to leave. And she just storms off to collect her things. Although the doc the doctor doesn't really hear this because the doctor is actually fixing the TARDIS because he felt something was wrong, and then immediately after she she leaves to go get her things, the doctor gets a psychic call from Gallifrey, his home planet, and they need him. However, they say you can't take Sarah, so he sets the coordinates to drop her off at home, and uh, Sarah already this is like wait a minute is already saying I'm leaving, and he's like oh how did you know? I got a call that says you need to go, and she's like, wait a minute, you're going to California? I want to go, and it's like, I can't, I can't take you, we need to leave, you need to leave, and uh, he tells her where he's dropping off, it's just, it's an interesting way, because Tom Baker always did the, kind of, really showed the doctor was an alien, and so he, he tried to cut her off, or tried to, you know, because this is like a real emotion that this doctor's really feeling for the first time, and also the doctor in general doesn't like it when the companions leave, so he's trying to be like, you know, get it done as soon as possible, it also kind of like, because especially with his doctor, he did emotions a little bit differently. When there's something like serious going on, he goes, oh, he treats it like a normal thing, it's mundane. But when it's something very, very small, it's like, you know, nothing to really care about, he gets all excited for it, but this is like a really big emotional thing, and he doesn't want to give in to those emotions, so he tries to, you know, hurry it up, or kind of, you know, dodge it, or just kind of cut her off to make it, to try and guess what she's trying to say next so he can get it done, and it's just like, oh, man. Just, you could just see a lot of emotion in their faces. You can read what's going on. And um, the one thing that it always brings tears in my eyes, even when I saw clips of this early on, is when Sarah, uh, Sarah just says to the doctor, don't forget about me. And the doctor just goes, oh, Sarah, don't you forget about me. And it's just like, oh, you just get the feeling that they're probably never going to see each other again. And uh, even though they make a prom he makes a promise that he will see her again, it, it's just like, oh, you wish you could, they can keep that promise. And, um, and then Sarah leaves, and as Sarah leaves the TARDIS out the way, they zoom in on Tom Baker, and you just get, it just seemed kind of reminiscent of John Pertwee when Joe left, when after Joe was getting married off, he walks away to Bet Betsy, and just sits in the car for a moment, and then just looks off to the side, and just got that close-up of his face, and you just see the loneliness and, and sadness in his eyes, and then drives off alone. And that was kind of the same thing here when they just, after Sarah left the TARDIS, and you just see Tom just, Tom Baker just standing there and just looking out that doorway. And they zoom in on him. It's, it was the same thing. You just, the loneliness. Because the Doctor is truly alone all the time. You know, he doesn't, 
he doesn't sometimes he just needs the companions and uh, and I was remembering this line from uh, the, the revival of Doctor Who to where somebody says such a lonely little boy lonely then and lonelier still and it's just it really does explain the doctor and then after afterwards we they cut to the outside of the TARDIS in, in Britain and uh, she watches the TARDIS you know disappear the, you know dematerialize away and she realizes she's not home <laughs> the doctor blew it uh, she's not in, in her hometown or neighborhood she doesn't even know where she is and it's just like after all this sadness you just start laughing you're like oh my god it was just a nice way to end it to where you're like you're so sad but then you're, you're happy because they ended it in a true doctor who fashion they didn't kill off uh, new new Doctor Who fashion, and it was kind of it was they kill off the companions. Uh, the old the old classic era, they either did kill off companions or they married off the companions, uh, or in this case with Sarah, they just left. Uh, but the new series, they seem to want to kill them off a lot more, which is kind of disturbing. Uh, but it was like this is like a true Doctor Who form to where even though it's complete sadness, you know the companions leaving. <laughs> they get you to laugh. <laughs> it was just, I was like, oh my god, how did he screwed it up? How could he screw up her leaving? It was just funny. I'm laughing with tears in my eyes. How could they do this? And then it just leaves with her whistling down the streets and then looks back one more time and they freeze the frame on her and I was just like, that's a nice way to just say goodbye to Sarah Jane and to move on to the next next story. Overall, it was like I said, a really good story. There's, it's just a simple short story that's just expanded into four episodes, and everything was played off beautifully between the Doctor and Sarah Jane in that one scene that just capped off their relationship, because they, especially the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane, played beautifully together. They worked well with each other. Everything just was just great, and that was just a nice button to end that relationship. I thought it was beautiful. I'm crying right now. <laughs> um, Overall, I have to give this one like a good five stars out of five. It is really good, something to really enjoy. I can this is this is something I can see like somebody do like a, making a mini play out of or something uh, that could be like you know audition or something you could use scenes from the story from. It is fun, exciting, very tense. Has good you know tense, draw, thrilling moments. Uh, good comedy elements. A lot of good drama. It has like a bunch of everything. It's, it is really good. Um, the next episode, which I will get to eventually, um, is going to be a very political story. I, I'm, I'm surprised to see. Uh, I'm surprised to see that it is. And it's the first story to where the Doctor is actually alone. He doesn't have any companions in. And I want to see how that goes. It's like, wow, the Doctor is by himself. He has no companions to help him. He has to think with his own wit. This is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see that. So I like to end this with a, a bit of do, a temporary bit of do to Sarah Jane, because people who have the Revival series know that Sarah Jane does come back for a little while in the new series. Uh, but she also comes back in the 20th anniversary special uh, in the 80s of the classic era Who. And I can't wait to get that, to see all the doctors and the companions come back. It'd be really cool to see. Uh, so yeah, that's the Hand of Fear. And I'll see you next time when I review Doctor Who. The, the Deadly Assassin. Very interesting title, huh? See you then. Mm -hmm.